This is a fun one for me. Because I've been on this kick lately of finding Yeshua in the Torah. And, oh, and, and all the commands and everything. And it's just, it's fascinating to me. So I'm excited. Okay, well, first things first. Before anybody dives into, like, stuff like this and the sacrifices and the commands they need to understand the word fulfill and what Yeshua actually did fulfill and what he meant when he said those words so I'm not going to go into that in this video because I haven't I've been through it in past videos and then I have a whole playlist on fulfill anyway I just needed to preface that so in Amos 3:7. The father says that he does nothing without revealing his plan to the prophets first. If you go through all of the prophecies, especially Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, and Zechariah, Ezekiel, and Revelation. These are end-time prophecies that tell of Messiah's first coming and his second and the things that he is required to do. It tells where he's coming from. The root of David, the tribe of Judah, you know, King of Judah he has to come from that line. There's over 300 prophecies about his first coming that he has to complete in order to bring about the great day of the Lord, which is the end times, Revelation. Usually, if you read through the prophets, you will see that there is a pattern. There are bits and pieces of the exact same events. His first coming, Messiah's first coming, Messiah's second coming, and the vengeance um, and reward of God in the last day. It's twofold. And everything leading up to it, even now, is a buildup of coming to the great day of the Lord. Now let's go back to the Torah. So in Exodus 25, after his commands are given, he, Yahweh, is explaining to Moses to build the sanctuary and the tabernacle. And he states exactly how it's supposed to be built, laid out, the materials, and he says to copy it exactly the way that you see it in the heavenly sanctuary. So the tabernacle in the wilderness was a replica, a picture of the real thing. It's like when you go to the beach and you draw a picture of the beach. The picture is not the real thing. The beach is. So we have a heavenly tabernacle that's always been. Yeshua has always been the high priest of that tabernacle. And Moses was to copy down verbatim exactly what he saw and what he was told. Even the Levitical system was a replica of the spiritual heavenly system. Hebrews 8 references this too. It's a type and shadow, a replica. This held the place until Messiah came and fulfilled the first part of the prophecy. So if we go and read exactly how Yahweh told Moses to prepare and build the tabernacle, and we walk through the tabernacle, we have the outer court with the basin, the water, and the altar, and then we go into the holy place where it has all the furnishings, the bread of presence, the menorah, the essence, I mean the incense where the prayers are going up. And then we go into the Holy of Holies with the Ark of the Covenant and the testimony, which is the commands, um, and the Ark of the Covenant and all the draperies and stuff. All of those are a shadow picture of Yeshua. Every single thing can be traced to him, like, even down to the colors. Gold and silver, wool and linen. I mean, it's all a type and shadow of our great high priest. Exactly as Moses saw it. Remember, he could not create anything on his own. He had to write down exactly what he saw in heaven at the Father's throne, in the Father's throne. So the system built up for, and there has to be a shedding of blood for atonement of sin. We know this. So the system prepared to make atonement for sin before Yeshua came is Yeshua's plan as well. Moses copied it from the heavenlies, and we know that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, tabernacled among us. So if we take the Torah and walk through the tabernacle, walk through the cleansing process, the Levite process, if we walk through the altar process, we walk into the holy place, not the holiest of holies, the holy place. So the tabernacle and the sacrifices that go along with the tabernacle were a foreshadowing of Messiah's sacrifice. So how does that apply with now, after 
that sacrifice has come. That perfect sacrifice that he made on the stake has come. He has now taken his place as great high priest. Well, if we go back and look in the Torah, what is the role of the great high priest? To make atonement for the people, to go into the holiest of holies. So the sacrifices of bulls and rams and doves and all those things that they used to do on the altar before Yeshua came, he does now in the heavenly temple, the original temple that the tabernacle was built after. Hebrews explains this beautifully, I think. He makes atonement for us in our blood in the heavenlies as we ask for forgiveness and repentance. And we now offer our bodies as a living sacrifice with our praise from our mouth, the way that we live, our obedience, our dedication to the Father and His people, being a temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't have the physical sacrificial system, but we have the heavenly sacrificial system right now. So the legal sacrificial system is still in place because it always has been. Since the sacrificial system of the Levites was in a replica of the heavenly system. It wasn't the real thing, just a placeholder. While we don't sacrifice rams and bulls and doves because Yeshua's blood covers that sin yeah. sacrifice. But you have to think, there were many different kinds of sacrifices and we are commanded to offer our bodies as the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit and the temple of the Holy Spirit as a living sacrifice, which is one of the reasons why it's so important to keep your temple spiritually and physically clean because a very holy, 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 powerful spirit dwells within it, given by our great high priest. Our altar is now our mind and our heart. It's still the same replica as the heavenlies, and Yeshua is still going into that holiest of holies and making atonement with his blood every time we repent. It's an active system going on right now. And so our sacrifices and our repentance, our obedience, our love, our devotion, our um, cleanliness state are all sacrificial offerings to our great high priest who is making atonement in heaven right now for our sin. And then he'll come back and fulfill the rest of the prophecy because he hasn't come back yet. He hasn't set up his millennial reign, which if we read about the millennial reign in the prophecies, the law of God will flow forth from Zion. Yeshua will be reigning with the Torah, the exact Torah that Moses copied at Mount Sinai, the exact Torah that's written on our hearts and on our minds when we accept the Holy Spirit. It's absolutely fascinating to see what he's doing right now in the heavenly tabernacle. And when the tabernacle comes down in Jerusalem and starts its reign, it's going to go forth from Zion. And if we read about what happens in the millennial reign, Zechariah 12 through 14, Isaiah 58 through 66, Daniel, Revelation, his reign won't just be in the heavenlies, it will be on earth as well. And the tabernacle that Moses saw will be dwelling here, working in operation the way it was always supposed to. Isn't that kind of, it's just so awesome. And all the second coming prophecies are centered around how he's going to govern and do away with wickedness. While in the betrothal period of the new covenant, which we are now, we are not fully in it because we haven't had the marriage supper of the Lamb. But the whole betrothal period right now is just practice for the millennial reign.